Hello everyone and welcome down the Bitcoin Rider. I'm Roxy and today I'm super pumped to bring you the first wallet tutorial. And not any wallet, we start with one of the king out there, we start with Samurai Wallet. Full disclaimer, I'm not going to be biased simply because I love Samurai Wallet. It's a wallet, I've been using it for years now and I really think it is a wallet made for the street. It is a wallet made for Bitcoiners. Why? because of the characteristic. It's open source, it's privacy oriented, it's sovereignty, it's secured. All of that makes it highly flexible and truly a Bitcoiner wallet. And you can feel the passion in the dev that are doing such an amazing work, adding privacy feature on privacy feature, BIP on BIP. They are really like making it the wallet of the street and I enjoy that quite a lot. Anyway, the tutorial is going to take between 5 to 10 minutes depending on if you know what a passphrase is and what a private key is. Don't worry, we're going to go step by step. What is the passphrase? What is the private key? How to secure them? How to set them up? And then how to use the wallet? This tutorial is for any level, but if Samurai Wallet isn't the right wallet for you, then you need to pick another tutorial. Like we saw in chapter 3 or in the next video that's going to be posted pretty soon, uh, everyone is different. So maybe that wallet is not for you because it's maybe too complicated because it's not the right thing. If you have a lot of money for the long term, you shouldn't use Samurai because Samurai is still a hot wallet. You need a cold wallet solution uh, if you're aiming for the really long term or multi-sig. Um, etc etc also it's only on android so if you have an iphone you will have to check uh, some other video anyway if samurai wallet is the right wallet for you let's jump straight up into it all right let's go so you just go into your play store and you type samurai wallet you download it and then you run it they're gonna ask for the camera and the right to create an encrypted file once that is done we're gonna activate tor Oh my god, I'm gonna use Tor, is that not the thing used by hacker and to go into the dark web? Yes it is, but it is way more than that. Tor is simply a means to get more privacy online and it is used all over the world to fight authoritarian regime. It is used to help whistleblower communicate and denounce some injustice within a corporation or government. It also helps journalism all over the world to communicate safely in order to do some investigation. It is really a tool of freedom and it is a key aspect of our liberty as individual and society. And even if you don't care about privacy, you can tell your friend that you've used Tor and that's pretty badass. So lucky for us, in Samurai it's only one click, so go ahead, activate it, it doesn't cost you anything, and we can straight up launch a wallet. They're now gonna ask us for the pass phrase. All right, let's do a one minute resume of what a wallet is so we understand why we need a pass phrase. A wallet is only a door towards your Bitcoin. Your Bitcoin are never gonna be on the wallet, they're never gonna be on the phone, they're always gonna be on the blockchain. But to access those Bitcoin, you will need a private key. And the private key is created via the wallet. That's really the key here. You can destroy your phone, lose it, it can be stolen as long as you have that private key secured and with you, you can have access to your money anywhere in the world at any time. A private key is basically a list of 12 to 24 words that you're gonna be writing down on a piece of paper and keep secured. But the thing is, if someone steals that private key, he steals the money, right? So in order to mitigate that risk, we create another layer of security on top of it using a passphrase. So now he has to steal both the key and the passphrase to get access to the money. I can understand that that is maybe too complex for you. That is fine. In that case, just go and search for another solution more adapted to your personality. Essentially, a passphrase is a really long and complex password. So the best thing to do is pick up a book and select four words at random from it. Then you're gonna memorize them. Uh, you can create a small story to memorize them. It's usually the best way to do it. And you're also gonna write them down on the piece of paper. Ideally, use the template I provide in the description. It's gonna be easier for the future and it's gonna make it all nice and simple. It's really important that this passphrase is highly secure so it doesn't get brute forced or hack. Uh, if you don't know anything about password, go ahead and check my last pass tutorial. You will learn the basics. If you don't want to do anything I just said, just keep your regular password and add a couple of words at the end. Uh, at least that is going to make it way stronger, even though it's not optimal. Now they're going to ask to set up the pin. Basic pin rule, guys, you know them. Don't use 000, do not use your birthday, and do not use the same as your phone. It doesn't matter that you have the craziest security ever. <laughs> if we can unlock the money by unlocking the phone, then it's pointless. Once again, if you think you're gonna forget the pin, write it down on the recovery paper. 
not your key, not your Bitcoin. So I guess that right in front of you, you have your private key. It is really important. So if you're new to Bitcoin on this channel, first of all, welcome, nice to meet you. And also I'm gonna be talking about private key quite often because with private key comes sovereignty and with sovereignty comes liberty, but also responsibility. Here are a couple of rules you must follow if you don't want to lose your money. Always use pen and paper, never make it digital. If you make it digital, the money is gone. So you need to hide every camera. You cannot make photocopy and you cannot put it on your computer files. When you're gonna be writing it down, a couple of rules. Use a ink, write clearly. So like you can see, I have a pretty terrible handwriting, but I'm doing an effort here. And also uh, ideally, again, use the template I provide. It's simply a mean to have a structured way to think about private key and your security. You will have to go over it again in a couple of years. You will have to review it, create an inheritance plan. And if you have all the information in a clear and structured way, it's gonna be way easier for the future. Finally, keep the world in the right order. It's really important. And do not cut the private key into pieces. Keep it as one piece of paper. All right, now that you wrote down that private key on paper, you need to manage it. So immediately three rules. You make a copy, you put them into folders and you hide them in two different location. Folders, it's gonna make it all nice and pretty and it cannot be damaged by water so easily. And two locations, so if one house get compromised because it can burn, because there's a whatever scenario, then you have access to your money somewhere else. Last rule, like we saw in chapter zero, prerequisite to Bitcoin, do not talk about it. Privacy is king. Uh, if you don't want trouble, just keep a low profile. Finally, we need to create an inheritance plan so we can guarantee that if something happened to us, our family and loved one will have access to the money. Uh, it's not gonna be covered here, it's gonna be covered in chapter six and in a future video. But in the meanwhile, if you want to do it right now, go ahead and my website, thebitcoincapital.com, it's chapter six, or pick Pamela's book, Crypto Inheritance Planning, Small bracket, like you can see in the example, I kept the passphrase and the private key in the same piece of paper. Uh, that is because in my case, I do not use Samurai Wallet for a large amount of money. Every time I hit a certain amount, I move the money toward a cold wallet solution. However, if you do plan to use Samurai Wallet for a large amount of, of money every day, then you should definitely separate the passphrase and the private key into d two different pieces of paper and store them in four different locations. Quick activity for anyone that is new, you should erase the wallet and recreate it. You will really understand the power of the private key and the passphrase by doing so. So at the top of the wallet, the three dot, press it, you go to wallet, all the way down, you have safely erased the wallet, you press that, and then you're back to the lobby. You go back to the three dot at the top and you put import an external wallet. Here they're gonna ask for the private key, so you write it down and they're gonna ask for the BIP39 passphrase, which you type down and the wallet is recreated. If you had any money, if you had done any transaction, all of that will be there. It is really the strength of the private key. All right, that's it for the activity. Now let's see what's inside that wallet. The first thing they're gonna give you is a pay name. A pay name is basically a pseudonym that is linked to your wallet and you can share it with friends so it, you don't have to use the addresses. If that's something you wanna use, go ahead. On the screen, you can see mine. So obviously from now on, all the addresses you will see are my own and can be used. That will be highly appreciated. All our content is free and will remain free to enter a wider Bitcoin education. Like you saw in the intro, I doubt any government is gonna sponsor that type of uh, educational content, but privacy is important for the next generation. So we are gonna work on that pretty hard here. <laughs> All right, that's done. So we're back in the lobby at the bottom right, you can press, you're gonna have the option to send or receive money. So we're gonna go receive and we're gonna have an address popping up. The address is a really long thing at the top, it's complex and annoying. So if you're gonna share it to receive money, make sure that you copy paste it and you double check uh, every time you use them. Like we saw in chapter two, a transaction cannot be canceled. So be really careful if you're gonna send money, make sure you get that address right. Also, you will notice that Samurai has a lot of options so you can decide how much money you want to receive, all the type of addresses or derivative path. Which is important with Samurai is that every time you're gonna press that receive button, it's gonna be a different address. And that is awesome. That is exactly what you want because you don't want to reuse the same address twice. It's a lack of privacy. So instead, every single time you're gonna press that button, a new fresh address is gonna pop out. Just be aware they are all linked to the same private key. So even if you just don't touch them for years and years, they will always work and they will always be linked to that private key. Like you can see on the screen, we just received some money, but that transaction isn't confirmed. 
And yes, in Bitcoin, to ensure that the money is actually yours, it needs to be included into a valid block. Here, it's not the case yet. The money needs to go through a miner. So basically, my wallet broadcasted the transaction. It was propagated through nodes, and now it's in the mempool. It's waiting to be confirmed. At some point, a miner is going to grab that transaction, mine it using proof of work, and include it into a valid block. That new block is going to propagate through the network, and when it's going to reach my node and my wallet, it's going to show as confirmed. While this could be tricky, remember that you need to wait for one transaction at least, because while it's not confirmed, it's not your money. For a coffee, one transaction is enough, so it's basically 10 minutes. However, if you're going to send billions of dollars, then you should probably wait for more than one transaction uh, to make sure the transaction is indeed immutable. All of that is because we are using the base layer of Bitcoin, this blockchain. If we were to use Lightning, all of that would be very different, but all of that is a question of trade-off. All right, the transaction is confirmed, so now we can spend the money. At the bottom, we go to send. We can choose the address. We're going to scan a QR code, so it's faster and easier. We're going to send 100,000 Satoshi, which is basically 10 bucks. A Satoshi being a smaller unit of Bitcoin. Now we can select a privacy option. So we have batching, which is basically one transaction sent to multiple person. We have ricochet, which is basically going to do some hop between the blockchain. And we have Kahoot. It's going to basically be a code join transaction. So we press send and here we can choose the fee and if we want to use a stone wall protection. To make it simple, the more fee you put, the faster the transaction is going to be accepted by a miner and vice versa. In my case, I have all my time, so I'm going to put the lowest fee possible. The transaction is being broadcast, it's been signed and it's been sent. So we saw how to receive some money, we saw how to send money and buy stuff. Samurai has some other great features, but be careful, this may be illegal. It's called mixing or washing. Uh, the idea is basically to take your Bitcoin, send them and mix them with other people's Bitcoin and then send it back to yourself. It will basically block the trace from before and untint those Bitcoin. Uh, it is highly efficient for privacy, but it is also illegal in many jurisdictions. So I cannot teach you that, but if that is an option that is legal in your country, you may consider it. In general, Summer Relic really has a lot of options on how to deal with addresses, private key, public key, and how to create transaction. Uh, this is way too complex to, cover, to be covered in this video, but if that's something that interests you, go ahead and explore it yourself. And that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It's really gonna make a big difference for us. We are still pretty young, but we are really Bitcoin oriented. Pro privacy, pro open source, pro sovereignty. And uh, we're going to be producing a lot of Bitcoin content, so you don't want to miss that out. If you have any question, please comment. I will try my best to answer you. In the meanwhile, there's a full PDF version of that tutorial if you just want to like read it or go over a specific aspect of the Samurai wallet. Uh, and that's it. If you want more info, please check my website, thebitcoinwebresult.com. Watch Samurai Champloo, the anime. It's really amazing. Keep those private keys secured, and I'll see you up for the next video. Bye-bye.